If Jay Dilla isn't your favorite producer, he's probably your favorite producer's favorite producer. He's considered one, if not the most influential hip hop producer ever for a reason. Even our future AI overlords will tell you the same, his beats impacted hip hop like no one else has. But how did he achieve this? What does Jay Dilla do with his beats that makes him so unique? Today we're going to uncover this by analyzing his beats and breaking down three ideas that he uses in his production that you can use to improve your own beats too. But before we start, if you could do me a favor and hit like and subscribe if my videos have ever helped you out and let me know down in the comments which producer you want me to do a spotlight on next. So let's start off with number one. A few years back, Erica Badu, friend and collaborator of Jay Dilla, was talking about his beats and she said something really interesting. Dilla is very dirty. And, and the frequency is a certain, there's a certain bottom velocity to it. Now, what does this mean? Jay Dilla often produced his beats in a different way from other producers, where his beats had more presence in the low end. For example, you can see this frequency breakdown of these two beats, and Dilla's has more presence towards those lower frequencies. Now, the interesting part is how he's able to do this in some really unique ways. An example of this is Shake It Down. Towards the end of that beat, he reveals a sampling technique that you don't often hear nowadays. He slowly releases this filter and reveals that there was a sample in the low end of this beat the entire time. And this is a very different approach to sampling. Often when people sample, they listen for the melodic high frequency instruments to build their beat around. For example, you might hear that flute and those higher pitched plucks and want to make a beat using those sounds. But by using Jay Dilla's technique instead, we can create that low end feel in our beats. So first we'll take the sample. And instead of starting by creating my chops, I'll begin by adding a filter or an EQ or downsampling first. And now that I have this low end version of my sample, next I'll chop it up and create my loop. And now that I have this foundation built using this sample, I'll start layering my own instruments on top of the sample. So the next time you're digging for samples, instead of focusing on the higher frequency instruments to sample, try going the opposite way. It can help you get that warmer low end feel that might work better for your style. Speaking of unique ways of filling up space in your beat, let's talk about this next technique that can help prevent you from overproducing. You can hear this technique in his song, The Police. Now it's very subtle, but I'll isolate that sound that I'm talking about. You can hear we have this short repetitive sound that's constantly playing throughout the beat. And this is a technique that Dilla does in many of his beats. Now, why is this so helpful? If you feel like your beat's incomplete, like it's missing something, many producers will try to add yet another full sound into their beat. Then they'll create another full pattern, but this can easily lead you to overproducing if it's not what your beat needs. So instead, try using this technique to help your beat sound more full, but do so in a more balanced way. So let's take this beat here, for example. Instead of adding in yet another instrument with a complex pattern, I'm going to merely grab a random sample here, isolate just a small piece of it, EQ or filter how much space it takes up, Then create a highly repetitive pattern using the sound just as a way to fill up space. You can hear when I mute the sound. The beat doesn't sound quite as full. This is just a really smart creative way to fill up space in your beat, but do so in a way where you don't end up overproducing and making your beat sound too full. 
Now let's talk about an idea that plagues modern producers. They'll watch any YouTube tutorial on drum patterns, for example, and they'll all have a similar issue. Even this video from Kareem Benzema. What I'm talking about is being trapped in grid-based beat making. I want you to take a listen to this beat by Dilla and listen to the hi-hat placement specifically. Yeah. Uh. Now we did a rough translation of where these drums are placed and you can see this visually. This is an idea that you would never get to if you just stuck with grid-based beat making, no matter what template you tried using or how much you turned up the swing. And even with your song arrangements, the same kind of trap can occur. You produce a perfect four bar loop and when you turn this into a full beat, you stay within the grid. But you might be missing out on some really unique ideas. A perfect example of a Dilla beat going outside of the grid in the arrangement is Take Notice. I did yet another rough translation of how Dilla arranged this beat and it's insane how far outside the grid this beat gets. The sample usage starts in an odd place and only one and a half bars are used for this first piece of the sample, which is already kind of unusual. Then Dilla takes another piece of the sample and creates a six bar loop out of it, which is also strange. He uses this piece of the sample over and over, but then he uses a different piece of the sample for one and three quarters of a bar, but look at where the crossover point happens. It's not on the grid, which is something you don't see often. Then we get another piece of the sample, which lasts for five bars, also unusual, but again, it's not a perfect five bars. The crossover is also off grid again. Throughout this beat, you can see that he uses different parts of the sample that all have unusual lengths, and the sample chops start and end at very unusual times as well. It's just an amazing approach to sampling here. And by sticking to producing using the grid, these ideas would just never occur. So let's start by taking this beat of mine right here. At times, if I feel like my beat's a bit too stiff or boring, sometimes I just create one pattern that's outside the grid, and that can be enough to make my beat suddenly be a bit more interesting. Now I want to make sure to say these are more advanced techniques, especially for the drum patterns, and especially if you're a beginner too. This might not be the best place for you to start. So here's what I recommend. I have a video showing up next to me that shows three different levels of drum patterns, beginner, intermediate, and pro. So no matter where you're at, you can get the help that you need with your drum patterns. And those are three Dilla ideas that you can use in your beats. I hope you liked the video. If so, hit like and subscribe, and check out the video next to me if you need help with your drums. Otherwise, I'll see you next week.